Okay, so in previous videos I've talked a bit about the Irish border, but in this video I want to dig into the border in a bit more detail. Now, the Irish border really wasn't discussed at all before the 2016 referendum. It was discussed a lot after it, but not really with any great understanding. Now, one of the things Brexiteers often said is, they would say things like, well, why can't we just go back to how it was before we joined the, the EEC? Or, you know, the border was always open before we joined the EEC. And that's fundamentally wrong because it wasn't open. So to get into that, we need to discuss a bit about what makes a border open or closed. So there's basically two aspects to a border, people and goods. People breaks down to permissioning and security. Permission is basically, do you need a passport and possibly a visa to cross the border or can you just walk across by virtue of being a human being? And security is, are there any real or perceived security concerns, which means that the country you're entering might want to have people there to check you first, make sure you're not a wanted criminal, you're not carrying weapons, explosives, etc. And then goods breaks down to regulations. Now I should say regulations have gradually developed over time. If you go back to 1923, there was no chlorinated uh, beef, there was no chlorinated chicken, there was no hormone injected beef. You didn't worry about whether or not your children's clothing was flame proof. If you bought some fireworks, they might work or they might blow up in your face. Who knew? Um, so the regulatory stuff gradually developed over time. Um, and then customs is basically import taxes. It's do you have to, if you're transporting goods across the border, do you have to pay taxes, essentially? Now, for boards to be fully open, as you have like now between, well, actually, as you have now in Ireland, or as you have in, say, between Belgium and uh, the Netherlands, all four of these have to be open. If any one of these is closed, then your border is closed, essentially. So let's look at how Ireland developed, the Irish border developed. So if we take the pre-Troubles era, so for permissioning, it was open. That was because we, we've had a thing right from the start of Irish independence. We've had a thing called the common travel area, which is sort of a bit like, I guess it's like a, a British Irish version of the Schengen zone. It's why if you fly to Ireland, you don't need to have a passport. You, you, need, you need photo ID for security purposes, you don't need a passport. When I flew back from Octacon a few weeks ago, we got a bus, a bus picked us up from the plane and took us to the terminal and it just dumped us into a door that led straight to the baggage area. Uh, we didn't have to go through passport control because it's within the common travel area. And in terms of security in the pre-troubles area, the border was open. I've got, so the reason now I've got is peace mostly. I, I, I get it wasn't peaceful. Um, I mean, there was the official IRA's border offensive of 1952 to, sorry, 1956 to 1962. There was constant ongoing low level trouble. There was huge, massive systemic discrimination against um, Irish nationalists uh, living in the north. So as peace went, it, it, you know, it was built of exhaustion and uh, built upon foundations of sand. But compared with the, the War of Independence and the Civil War that preceded it and the troubles that followed it, it was sort of peaceful. The point is, there was no ongoing security situation. So that meant that in this period, roughly before, say, 1970, people could just walk across the border. People. Goods is different. Now, the registry border, in as such as there was a registry border there, and I'm not so much sure that there was, was closed. But the key thing here is customs. That is, in, in the 1st of April 1923, the new Irish Free State Government instituted customs tariffs on goods coming into Ireland from uh, the United Kingdom. Uh, partly, I think, to raise money, partly to assert their independence. They didn't want to you know, be in a de facto customs union with the United Kingdom, because yeah, that'd be a bit like Monaco being in a customs union with... France, you know, Monaco isn't really a separate country. It's sort of really kind of a, there's any people from Monaco here, I'm sorry to piss you off, but it's kind of really like a very autonomous protectorate of France. Um, and so that meant you had custom stops, except they weren't on all roads. I think it was something like 15 customs crossing points. The other roads were what was called unapproved roads. And basically, you could walk across the border if you weren't carrying anything. But if you were driving or you were transporting goods, you were supposed to go, not use the unapproved road, you were supposed to go to one of these. Um, the exception, there were exceptions. If you were I think, a doctor or nurse, like a distant nurse or a priest or something, you could get um, little things you could put in your windscreen which gave you the right to drive across the border. Bear in mind, it's a very, very bad wiggly border. That's a whole other story. Um, 
But other than that, you had to go to one of the approved roads. Uh, and then the, you had to have, a, I think, a form. You had to get a little booklet or something that you go. I'll put a link. I've got a, there's a whole article about it I've been reading. I'll put a link to it in a pinned post. But you had to get a book, which had to get stamped. Um, the customs post would close at night. If you were coming through after a certain period of time, you had to make an appointment. If you hadn't made an appointment, they wouldn't come out. I mean, they were mad, but they just wouldn't open. So in that case, you had to wait to someone to turn up who did have an appointment. Um, so, and then of course you had to pay that you had to pay taxes essentially on stuff you were carrying. So the board was not open in any you know sense of the word. It wasn't it wasn't barbed wire, but it wasn't open. So. Then we move on to what I've called the early troubles period. Now, again, there's no hard line here. The, the security situation deteriorated from sort of, you know, 1969 onwards. But at this point, security became an issue. So the boards became closed from a security point of view. You had this era of, you know, checkpoints manned by armed police and soldiers uh, and so on. Uh, often the, the checkpoints weren't, strictly speaking, at the border. They were sort of like, you know, a mile away from the border for security purposes, but they, they were still there. Yeah, and, and crossing the border, I imagine, was not a trivial um, situation then. So you can see now we've got three out of four of these are closed. Then Ireland's new UK joined the EU, well the EEC as it was then, on the same day. And that's significant because that meant we were now in a customs union with the Irish. But it, crucially it was a customs union of equals. It was not like Monaco and France where France sets the external tariffs and that Monaco just accepts them, or say uh, Italy and Republic of San Marino. This was a customs union of equals where we each had the same vote. That's that's really crucial. And but the, you still had the registry board, which by this point was probably a thing. So you need certificates to move animals across the border and stuff like that and so on. And of course the security issue. You know, by this point the the troubles were very bad. Um, so you know the board was not in any way open. Then the crucial thing is when we get to 1992 and the creation of single market, because at this point now, the regulations are the same across the whole of Europe. So this is why I discussed in my first Brexit video. You've got no customs forms needed to cross the border, and you don't need any registry forms really either, because you know, if, 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 if hall ejected beef is illegal north of the border, it's illegal south of the border. So at this point, the only reason the border is closed now is the security situation. Other than that, there's no need for the border to be open. We've got the common travel area, which is like the Schengen zone. We've got the single market. We've got the customs union. So the border at this point could be exactly like the border between the Netherlands and Belgium, where they have the customs union, the single market, and the Schengen zone, which I think the Schengen zone came in around this sort of period of time. And so that is the background for the Good Friday Agreements. The Good Friday Agreements were essentially saying, look, the only reason now we have to have a border is because we don't have peace. If we had peace, we could get rid of the border. And then everyone who wants to live in the United Ireland can effectively be living in the United Ireland because it's not, it's not divided by a border. So you get that, the post-Good Friday thing. Common travel area, Good Friday agreement, but in this case, peace. Single market, customs union. But it's key that, that although the, uh, regrettably the Good Friday Agreement, it tangentially mentions the EU and it clearly implies the existence of the EU, but it doesn't specifically mention it, which would have been handy, would, would have been a good bit of foresight. But, and Patrick Kilty had a very good Twitter thread on this. It's all based on a slice of hand that basically is that because of the EU, the border has just gone away for everything other than security. So once you have peace, you don't need a border. And then if you're an Irish nationalist, you effectively can live your life in the United Islands. You, know, you can live in Donegal and just pop into Derry to go shopping in the supermarket and then pop back across the border between County London Derry and County Donegal. You know, so if you live in Donegal and Derry is your nearest city, then you just buy then go shopping because there's no, cust <laughs> there's no customs tariffs. Obviously, it wasn't like that when there was a customs border there. You didn't just shop, nip into Derry to do your shopping because you'd have a very long and awkward conversation with the customs officers on the way back and possibly end up has a trouser up quite a chunk of cash. So here's the thing. So when people say, when Brexit is saying, well, what's the problem? Why can't we just go back to how it used to be? Well, that's how it used to be, closed. And when they say, well, we've got the common travel area. Yes, that covers people. That's fine if you're walking across the border without a backpack. But if you're in a car, you've got a backpack, you might have awkward questions. You know, um, aside, one thing, 
It took me long time to understand this. Brexiteers would say things like, well, the border between Norway and Sweden is open. And someone who was often me, but sometimes else, would take the 30 seconds it takes to Google Norway, Sweden, border, click on images, and yeah, 30 seconds later, we'd be pasting a picture of a customs post on the Norway, Sweden border and saying, no, it isn't. And I'm thinking, like, why do they keep on saying something that's so obviously not true that can be disproved in like 30 seconds of Googling? And the answer is because when they said the border is open, they meant people. They were obsessed with people. It was, it, it was people coming in. And open means people can walk across without a passport or a visa. Goods wasn't even on their radar. It took me a couple of years. I remember I'm a bit thick. It took me a couple of years to work that one out. But anyway, so that is basically the history of the, the Irish border. I should say at this point, by the way, I do get, right, it's not the Irish border, it's the British border in Ireland. And with the exception of the fact that possibly the Free State Government has some blame for the fact that customs borders is instituted, I, I get basically, before any Irish people start coming in the comments, it's pretty much entirely our fault. Um, I, I get that. I get that, as an Englishman explaining the Irish border, um, I'm possibly doing the English version of mansplaining. In my defence, I'm talking to other English people or other British people. I'm not intending to educate Irish people on, on this one. This is me trying to do, it's not your problem. It's not the problem of Irish people to educate English people. But that, anyway, that is the Irish border history as I understand it and why it was the EU that took the border away, not the EU that created board, the border. And it was, it's the Northern Ireland Protocol. The Northern Ireland Protocol has essentially meant that Northern Ireland has stayed in that state. If it hadn't been for the protocol, Northern Ireland would have gone back to that state, which nobody wants. Well, nobody actually lives there, I think, once. Okay. Thank you. Hope that all made sense.